has the most beautiful of names and he is the most he is perfect and he is perfect and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free of all defects and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course has the most beautiful of names and we ask them by every single name that he has samayta bihi nafsak that you have named yourself aw aw allamtahu ahadan min khalqik and i'm asking you by i'm asking ya allah by every name that you have ever taught anyone of your creation aw anzaltahu fi kitabik or names that you have revealed and also the names ask you by the names that you have revealed your names that you have revealed in your book or awistatharta bihi fi ilmin ghaybi ilmin ghaybi inda or those names that you haven't even taught anyone yet and haven't revealed to anyone yet have kept it with you I ask you, so look at this, it's a very powerful hadith, or a very powerful dua. Because you're asking Allah. You know when we ask Allah, we say, Ya Rahman, O oh Lord who is all merciful. And when you're asking for forgiveness, you ask for mercy. And you mention the, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. When you're asking for forgiveness, you call upon Al Ghafur, the one who loves Al Afu, the one who loves forgiveness, and you call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his names. But here in this hadith, the Prophet وسلم, is teaching us to ask him by all of his names. Every single one of them. Even those that he has not even revealed. And thus we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from this hadith. It's clear, Allah, Allah has more than 99 names. And so there are names that He hasn't even taught anyone yet. And then we ask, and remember, when you make this dua, this dua will help, you, will help alleviate you of your concern and sadness and worries. So what you're saying here is related. What you're asking is related to your concerns and thus if a person knows that he is a servant of Allah, that everything that is happening, Allah knows. And Allah is all wise. And if you know the names of Allah, and if you know who Allah is, then it keeps you strong and it keeps you firm. Why? Because if you know Allah is all merciful, if you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is strict in punishment, if you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Ra'uf, Al-Rahim, Al-Ghafoor, Al-Qadir. And if you know He's all-knowing and all-seeing, you also know that whatever you may be going through, you know that Allah knows what you're going through, and you also know that Allah would never burden you with anything you can't handle. And so sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us with a test. And you have, we have to realize that whatever we are afflicted with, we are able to handle it because He will never test us with anything that we can't handle. But sometimes Allah wants us to be stronger and He gives us no option except to be stronger so that we can be stronger. And Allah knows. And that's why when you know Allah, then you also realize that you should never lose hope. وَلَا تَيْأَسُ مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ لَا يَيْأَسُ مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرُونَ Never lose hope in the comforting mercy of Allah, for none loses hope in the comforting mercy of Allah, except for disbelievers. Why is it that one who loses hope in the comforting mercy of Allah. Why is it that he's a kafir? Allah says, إِلَّا الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرُونَ Only those who are kafir. Kafirun. Those are the ones who are, fall in despair and lose hope and give up totally. Why is it that they, in this verse, Allah calls them kafirun? Why? 
Because it's as if they're saying, Ya Allah, you don't know what I'm going through. I can't handle what you're going through. No, Allah knows what we're going through. And He knows we can handle it. But as I mentioned, sometimes He gives us no option except to be stronger. Because He wants us to be stronger. And He wants to raise our status. And sometimes He wants us to return to Him. For sometimes when we are in a state of prosperity and ease, we don't come to the masjid. And then when we lose our job, MashaAllah, you wake up early in the morning, you come to the masjid, and the brothers said, MashaAllah, we haven't seen you here in a while. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, it's nice to see you, brother. I just lost my job. <laughs> but that's, sometimes that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminding us sometimes He's testing us by taking something away from us so that we wake up and come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, Allah knows what we're going through. And He's all wise. How often have we asked for something and later on we say, Ya Allah, Alhamdulillah, You didn't give me such and such things because I have something much so much better now. Allah is all wise. And sometimes Allah doesn't give us something right away because He knows that we're not ready for what we're asking for yet. Allah is all wise. مَعْضٍ فِي حُكْمِكْ عَدْلٌ فِي قَضَائِكْ أَسْأَلُكَ بِكُلِّ اسْمٍ هُوَ لَكْ I ask you by every name that you have, that you've ever named yourself with, or have ever taught anyone of your creation, or have ever revealed it in any book of yours, or kept it back in the knowledge of the unseen with you, I ask by all your names that you make the Qur'an and taj'al al-Qur'an rabi'a qalbi. So what's the first cure for sadness and depression? It's the recitation of the Qur'an. It's living by the Qur'an. So when you're asking Allah, Ya Allah, make the Qur'an the life of my heart. And Allah makes the Qur'an the life of your heart. Then it gives you the strength to be able to handle those concerns, those worries. And that's why the sadness will go away. You're asking Allah to make the Qur'an the life of your heart. And if you return to Allah and you recite the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts to cleanse your heart. And then you start to enjoy the Qur'an. And تَجَعَلَ الْقُرْآنُ رَبِيَ أَقَلْبِ Like the growth and the life of my heart. And then you will be connected to the Qur'an to the point where you don't want to stop reading. And that's why if you want to see your iman, you want to test your iman, test yourself with the Qur'an. You want to know why you're so sad, so depressed, so concerned. See how you are with the Qur'an. The, uh, Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu, the fourth Khalifa. And the third Khalifa, the third Khalifa of Islam, Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu, he said, لَوْ طَهُرَتْ قُلُوبُنَا لَوْ طَهُرَتْ قُلُوبُنَا مَا شَبِعْنَا مِنْ كَلَامِ رَبِّنَا If our hearts were pure and clean, we would never get enough of the word of our Lord. Meaning we would want to read day after day, hour after hour, every moment that we have an opportunity we want to recite the Qur'an. Because this is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so you ask Allah to make the Qur'an the life and the growth of your heart. وَنُورُ sadri, And the, the light of my chest. وَجَلَاءَ huzni, And the remover of my sadness. وَذَهَبْ hamni, And the alleviation of my, my concerns and my worries. 
if you say these words, you mention this dua. And this dua, you can find it in almost every major dua book. Like Hasan Muslim, you'll be able to find it, inshaAllah. Alleviation of sadness. And anyone who does that, Allah will. أَذْهَبَ اللَّهُ هَمَّهُ وَحُزْنَهُ وَأَبْدَلَهُ مَكَانَهُ فَرَحَا Allah will take away the sadness and the worries and He will replace it with happiness. He will replace it with happiness. And that's why even when you have faith, you might get tested and you, will, might, you might fall into sadness. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test a people. And He will test you according to your faith. And so the people who are stronger in faith, are, they, they get the greater tests. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, he said, أَشَدُّ النَّاسِ بَلَاءً الْأَنْبِيَاءِ ثُمَّ الْأَمْثَلُ فَالْأَمْثَلُ The people who are tested and tried the most are the Prophets and those who follow in their footsteps accordingly. And that's why the likes of Prophet Ya'qub alayhi salam, a prophet and messenger of God. Yet, he was sad. And he had concerns and he had worry and he was worried. So much so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبِيَضَّتْ عَيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْحُزْنِ وَبِيَضَّتْ عَيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْحُزْنِ فَهُوَ كَظِيمٌ his eyes became whitened, meaning he became blind. As a result, min al huzn, as a result of sadness. The sadness of the loss of Yusuf. The sadness of the disobedience of his beloved children. He loved them so much, but he was the, they were the ones harming him the most. That's is very hurtful when you love someone so much. Yet so much harm is coming from them. That's something hard to take. Sometimes you love your children, but your children sometimes are a test for you. And some parents go home, and when I come home from work tired. They want to sleep. But they can't fall asleep because on a Saturday night, they don't even know where their children are. They're worried. They love them so much. Yet sometimes, they cause us so much grief. And it's hard to take. You make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You supplicate to Him. And sometimes the relief does not come immediately. And so we, and you say, I pray five times a day on time. Most of the time I'm in the masjid. I'm reciting the Qur'an. But all of this is happening. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be stronger. And He wants us to have a higher status in Jannah. And He wants our sins to drop from our bodies like leaves. On a, wint on, on a wintry day, blistery wintry day. And thus, Prophet Ya'qub, a prophet and messenger of God, he cried and cried and cried until he became blind. You know how hard it is, how difficult it is to lose a child, especially at a young age. For those who have children and they're toddlers and they're six and s or seven or you know how much of a connection you have with them and to lose someone like that, that's very hard to take. You know, that is so difficult and the society knows how difficult it is. You know, in America we have what's called Amber Alert. If a child is ever kidnapped, on the highways, on the roads and on TV, and my phone, there's a message that comes to my phone. And it comes to everybody in the area. 
And sometimes it comes to everybody in the state. Sometimes it comes to everyone in the West Coast. Millions of people are getting this message. If you see such and such a person or a car, report, report, report it to the police officer. Call the authorities. A child is kidnapped, everybody knows. People are being killed shot left and right and I get no message of it whatsoever. Robberies are happening every few minutes. I don't get any alerts. But if a child is taken away from or is lost, everybody is on the lookout because they know what the parents are going through. Society knows how hard it is on the mother, on the father. And that's why the prophets and messengers, they faced the most hardship. Allah tested them the most. And they went through the most difficult situations. Why? So that we can have an example in patience. So that we can say they were patient. And they went through so much more than I did. Let me also be patient because they are the leaders of those who are patient. And so reflecting upon the lives of the scholars of before, the companions and especially the prophets and messengers of God, they went through the most hardships. They went through the most difficulties, yet they were strong. We living here think that we're going through a lot of hardship because of Islamophobia. Nobody went through like the Prophet, went through these things like the Prophet ﷺ did in Mecca. Nobody. They called him names. They strangled him. They took the fetus and the, the guts of a camel, the blood and the fetus of the camel, and they threw it on him while he was praying. And he continues to be in sujood until his daughter comes. And she's crying and cleaning it off her father, Fatima radiallahu anha, is crying. And her father turns over, turns to her, and says to her, I grieve not. For indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care and protect your father. He went through so much difficulties. And we do not ask for it. Don't say, Ya Allah, you know, test me and I'll show you. No. No, we don't. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to free us from all difficulties. And that's why he said, Afiyah. Ask Allah to alleviate you from all things difficult. Don't don't ask to meet the enemy. But if you meet the enemy, then be firm. But don't ask where I remember I was speaking about the Dajjal. And one of the students says, if I see the Dajjal, ooh. <laughs> I said, no, don't ask to go meet the Dajjal. If the Dajjal see you, sees you, he's going to go, hmm. <laughs> ooh, no. You run away. You run away. You don't even know. You don't know the trials and tribulations. This is the most difficult test that humanity will ever face. And you want to face it. No, no, run away. Our prophet told us, if you see, you hear about him in the east, go to the west. If you hear about him in the west, go to the east. Stay as far as you can from all trials and tribulations. Don't ask for it, but if it comes, then be firm. If it comes, then be firm. And so reciting the Qur'an is something that we have to make as a, a daily daily thing for us. 
The reward, of course, is very great. And on the day of judgment, your companion, the one who will be able to help you, is not your buddy here and there, no. It's the Qur'an. The Qur'an is your best buddy on the day of judgment. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, اِقْرَأُوا Quran, Recite the Qur'an, فَإِنَّهُ يَأْتِي يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ شَفِيعًا لِأَصْحَابِهِ Recite the Qur'an, for indeed on the day of judgment, it will intercede for its companions on that day. And so, of course, recitation of the Qur'an. But also the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us persevere through difficulties. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنُّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبُ Those who believe, and whose hearts find tranquility in the remembrance of Allah. For indeed in the remembrance of Allah do hearts, it is in the remembrance of Allah do hearts, that hearts find tranquility. Any emotional scar will heal faster with the remembrance of Allah. Any difficulties you have, make dhikr. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember Allah and also remember your blessings. The blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. When you concentrate on the blessings that you have, it will help you to persevere through the difficulties that are befallen upon, that have afflicted you. And so think about the blessings and think about the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you remember Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts your heart at ease. Another thing, the third thing that we need to do, and of course this is something we should do all the time, but especially when you're going through difficulties, increase in the amount of nawafil, the sunnah prayers that you do. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said man aada li waliyan faqad aadhantuhu bil harb whoever shows enmity towards my wali then i have indeed declared war upon him and those who are close to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whoever whoever shows enmity and or harm towards them then they are at war with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا افْتَرَدْتُهُ عَلَيْهِ There is nothing that will bring you closer to Allah than perfecting and fulfilling what is obligated upon you. Meaning do those, that which is obligatory first and foremost. Perfect those things. That's the most, those are the most beloved acts to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the manda- that which is mandatory upon you to fulfill. And then he says, وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلْ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهِ And my servant will continue to come closer to me with superiorogatory acts, with sunnah acts, until I love him. Allahu Akbar. Do we not want to earn the love of Allah? One way is to increase in our nawafil the sunnah prayers, the sunnah fasting, giving charity, doing good deeds that are not mandatory. The more, the more superiorogatory, extra deeds that you do, the more Allah loves you. And if Allah, فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُهُ And if I love Him, then I كُنْتُ سَمْعُهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِهِ Then I will be His hearing that He hears with. وَبَصَرُهُ الَّذِي يُبْصِرُ بِهِ And his sight that he sees with, and his hands that he uses with, and his feet that he walks with. 
وَإِنْ سَأَلَنِي And if he were to ask me لَأُعْطِيَنَّ Then I would give him what he asked وَإِلَنْ اسْتَعَاذَنِي لَأُعِيذَنَّ And if he were to ask, seek refuge in me I would protect him I would give him refuge And thus we want Allah to love us Increase in these deeds And Allah subhanahu will guide us And if He loves us Then He will help us Listen to not accept that which is pleasing to Him He will help us look at nothing Except that which is pleasing to Him And He will help us Not go, to, go anywhere And be at any place Except that which is pleasing to Him So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Will help us do good deeds the more we come closer to Allah, the more Allah helps us and comes closer to us. And so, if, you are, if we're afflicted with hardships and difficulties, then just know that whatever is happening to us, we will inshallah be rewarded if we're patient and we continue to be patient and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but not just patience remember increase in good deeds because he says وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَةِ seek help with patience and prayer seek help with patience and prayer and I'm not going to Take more of your time, but I'm going to share with you another hadith. The hadith is from Abu Umama Al Ansari. He was found sitting in the masjid by himself. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam walks in and sees the sadness on his face. And he says to him, Ya Aba Umama, he said, Oh Abu Umama, why is it that I see you here in a time that, remember this is a time that most of, most, most of the time the masajids are, are full, but there are, there are particular down times when people are at work and doing things. And he said, why, did, why is it that I see you in a, in a time that um, the masjid is empty? And so he says, O Messenger of Allah, sadness and worries have overcome me. And I have been, I have been also overwhelmed by debts. And that's why he's there in the masjid supplicating to Allah. And the Prophet ﷺ then says to him, Ya O Abu Umama, would you like me to tell you? Would you like me to teach you? Would you like me to tell you something? That if you were to say it, Allah would take away your worries and will help you to fulfill your I mean, will help you to pay off your debts. Wow, mashallah. Not only is He going to take away our worries, He's going to help us pay our debts. And by the way, being in debt in Islam is something that is looked down upon so much so that the Prophet ﷺ would not pray for a person if he had debts. He would ask. That's how serious it is. But we're living in a materialistic society and a society where they are always telling us to buy things we don't need with money we don't have at a price we can't afford to impress people we don't even like. Every day we're being told buy this and buy that, you need this and you need that. And the iPhone 6 comes out and the iPhone 5 is perfect until the 6 comes out. 
is there anything wrong with the previous iPhone? No. But oh no, the six, if you press it, the pictures move. How often are you going to be using that now? But you know what? You just got one last year or less than a few months ago. But you know what? It's no longer perfect. Why? Because the six just came out. And it has this feature and that. Oh, not, it, doesn't, it has one new feature probably. <laughs> Sometimes that's all. And then they're saying that you need it. No, you don't need it. And that's why if you can't afford something, don't buy it. If you don't know what it means to live within your means, you're never going to be happy. And that's why in this society they tell you, it's okay, put it on credit. You know, in America, the average American has over $10,000 in debts. The average American, there are so many people who have so much more. The average American has over $10,000 in debts. Because they're being told it's okay to spend money you don't have. But these debts, these mortgages, when you fall into debt, these are the things that keep you up at night. And that's why if you can't afford it, don't buy everything you want. There's a difference between the want and need. Don't mix the two up. If you need it, fine, yes, buy it. But if you just want it, Think twice before you buy it. Don't, don't, don't. It doesn't mean that you don't buy everything you don't buy anything you want. No, you know, sometimes you, if you have the money, it's okay to buy it. But if you can't afford it, try to live within your means. And so the Prophet sallallahu says to him, he says, "Say these words when you wake up in the morning. Meaning, when say these words in the morning, either asbahta wa either amsait." In the morning, after Fajr, for example, and the afternoon after Asr, say these words. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take away your sadness and your worries and help you pay off your debts. What is it? What are these words? <coughs> say, Allahumma inna a'udhu bika min al hamni wal hasan. Oh Allah, I seek refuge from all worries and sadness. And I seek refuge from cowardliness and miserliness. Wait, what does my, being miser have to do with it? People who are miser are the saddest people on earth. People who are generous are the happiest people on earth. Not just from an Islamic standpoint, even psychologically. Even studies have been done, in fact. There, were stu there was a study that was done at Harvard University. They gave some money to a group of people and they said, spend this on yourself. Spend this on yourself, treat yourself with this money. And then they gave another group of people. They said, spend this on somebody else. Make someone else happy. At the beginning of the day, they will, you know, from a, a scale of 1 to 10, what's your level of happiness? At the end of the day, what's your level of happiness after you spent that money on yourself? And what's your level of happiness here, you guys, those who have taken the money and tried to make other people happy, what's your level of happiness? They found that over 95% of the people who did not spend on themselves, but spent it on others, were more happy at the end of the day, and these guys were still at the same level, even though they spent it on themselves and they treated themselves. They were less happy than those who tried to make other people happy with their wealth. So don't believe the saying that says money cannot buy happiness. No. Money can bring happiness, but don't spend it on yourself. Give it away. And then you'll see, make other people happy. Money can bring happiness, but spend it on others. Be generous because generosity makes you happy. We have been, Allah created us to be generous. 
And if we're not generous, then we won't be happy. And say, well, And I seek refuge in you from the overwhelming debts, overwhelming of debts and the oppression of men. These are the things that make people very sad. Debts and oppression. So you seek refuge in those things. And if Allah gives you, Allah responds to your dua, inshallah, the sadness will go away and your debts, inshallah, will be paid for. Allah will help you to pay your debts by giving you the rizq so that you can spend. Say these words in the morning. And say these words in the afternoon. Islam does not guarantee that you'll always be happy. But it gives you the tools to handle it when you're sad and worried and concerned. And another thing that keeps people you know, busy and worried is that they're concerned about things that they shouldn't be concerned about. A lot of little things that we're worried about or you know, that don't concern us cause us to be sad also and they shouldn't and that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he just mentioned a hadith I, you guys know the, 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 the joke right? have you heard the joke of why did the chicken cross the road you heard the joke who's heard it before why did the chicken cross the road do you know that in the sunnah there's an answer for it why did the chicken cross the road the answer for it, and this is like the final answer. After this, you don't need to discuss this matter anymore. You know, no more difference of opinion here. The Prophet ﷺ said, "Min husn al-Islam al-mar tarkuhu ma la yani." Of the excellence of a person's Islam, he leaves that which doesn't concern him. Who cares why the chicken crossed the road? <laughs> That's the answer. Don't worry about it and you won't have any problems with it. As Muslims, we are not concerned with things that are, don't, you know, especially with the internet age, there are times when this address comes up. Is it purple, or green, or blue? What, what was the color? Gold or something. White, gold, blue, and black. MashaAllah, one dress can have five colors? Like all the same time, at the same time? Like I'm not talking about different spots of it. That dress is one color only, but everyone is saying it's different. And the, the whole discussion, I wake up one morning, everybody's talking about the color of her dress. How will it be like? Who cares about the color of this dress? Like, there's so many things that we waste our time with that act, take our valuable time. And there are things that we shouldn't be concerned about. Like... I'm not saying that you shouldn't play sports or watch sports or anything like that, but you don't need to cry if Manchester City loses to Manchester United. You do have to? No? It doesn't happen often, right? <laughs> but you don't need to cry. I mean, it's okay, to, but you know, it's not that big of a deal. You're not losing anything. Right? Just put your priorities straight. Focus on the pleasure of Allah because that's where happiness is. And when sadness comes, you're strong enough, you can carry it. You can handle it and you'll be stronger. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us that which benefits us and benefits us from that which has taught us. Wajazakumullahu khairan wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Before I go, inshallah, I just want to remind that I'll be here myself and uh, many of the Al Maghrib instructors will also be here on Sunday, uh, the third, for Infest. So I think some of the brothers are out there also. So um, I hope to see you all there also, inshallah. Jazakumullahu khair. Subhanakallah. Jazakallah to Sheikh Abdubari Yahya for visiting us, inshallah, and taking time out of his schedule to benefit us, inshallah. Um, just one final announcement. This Friday, inshallah, the Juma Khutbah will be delivered by Sheikh Yahya Ibrahim. So we encourage everyone to attend, inshallah. Jazakallah. Subhanakallah. Muhammad. Ashadu Allah. Ilaha illa. Ant. Astaghfirullah.